Therefore, it's time for member statements. The member from Sarnia Lambton. Yes, uh, Mr. Speaker, March 3rd, the birthday for a decorated Canadian, James Montgomery Dewan, familiar to many in this legislature and across Ontario as Star Trek's Lieutenant, Lieutenant Commander Montgomery Scott. Scotty, known as the Miracle Worker, served on the USS Enterprise and could always be counted on to beam you up. As Chief en Engineer, he saved the Enterprise on numerous occasions, whether it was from the Dyson Sphere or from the Nexus. Although he spoke with a Scottish accent, he also helped create the Vulcan and Klingon languages used on the show. <clears throat> Not only was Doohan a legend of the Federation, but he was also a real-life hero as well. Like so many others of that generation, he fought in, second, in the Second World War. Growing up in Sarnia, he attended Sarnia Collegiate, where he excelled in math and science and enrolled in Army cadets. At the beginning of the Second World War, he joined the Royal Canadian Artillery. Duhan landed at Juneau Beach on D-Day and survived getting shot many times. Mr. Speaker, James Montgomery Duhan served Canada honorably in our military. He passed away over a decade ago. Cheers to you, lad. Thank you. The dilithium crystals are, can't bear it anymore. Yeah. The uh, member from Essex on member statements. Thank you very much, Speaker. I rise today to commend some uh, exceptional folks in my riding who have put forward their effort and their professionalism to raise awareness about the opioid crisis that is affecting not only my community, but I would imagine those around the province. On February 28th, Windsor and Essex County Community Health Centre, the LaSalle Police, the Erie St. Clair CCAC Mental Health and Addiction Nurses held their Not My Kid forum at the Vollmer Centre in LaSalle to discuss the increasing trends and threats to our community poised by opioid use uh, among teenagers. Uh, I want to rec recognize Al Gibson, who is a, uh, a uh, LaSalle Police Sergeant uh, Al uh, has dedicated his career to working uh, at the community level, to informing uh, young kids. He's, uh, he's an excellent uh, representative for uh, policing, but he himself is shocked by the amount of uh, arrests that are being made under uh, youth mental health uh, charges, the, the Mental Health Act. It's, uh, it's directly correlated to this epidemic of opioid use. We have to address it. We have to talk to our kids about the impact that these drugs have, and we have to be frank with them, Speaker, because just like the forum uh, was stated, not my kid. We would all believe that there's no way that our kids could get into this. Well, this affects every person, no matter the geography, no matter the socioeconomic status, it is pervasive, it's invasive, it's insidious, and we need to tackle it, but we need to talk to our kids to ensure that they have the information and they're armed with the information. I appreciate their efforts. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Trinity Spadina. Thank you, Speaker. I rise uh, today with a heavy heart and uh, take this moment to pay tribute to a leader in Toronto's black community who passed away this past Monday. Akua Andrea Wolcott uh, was a passionate av uh, activist who devoted most of her life towards champion equality and justice for black Ontarians. She believed strongly in the power of community engagement, and as the executive director of the Harriet Tubman Community Organization, she put this belief to action. The HTCO offers social and recreational programs for youth of all ages, particularly youth and women of African descent. She believed in our newcomers by offering support and educational training and tutoring. She was a truly, she was a true advocate and community builder in every sense of the word. Most recently, she spoke out on the distress, distress impacts that systemic racism was having on the community and offered her help to come up with solutions. Aqua will be sincerely missed by all those whose life was she touched. I stand with my colleague and all Ontarians today, offering our deepest condolence to Aqua's family and friends. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Elder Middlesex, London. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, March is recognized as Nutrition Month by the Dietitians of Canada. This year's slogan is Take the fight out of food, spot the problem, get the facts, seek support. 
The fact of the matter is malnutrition is costly and often an unrecognized issue in Ontario's health system. Screening, assessment, prevention and treatment can save lives and precious health care dollars. Malnutrition is a deficiency or imbalance of energy and nutrients which can increase the risk of falls, infections, pressure ulcers, and a decline in normal functional abilities. 45% of patients admitted to hospitals are malnourished patients. They often have an increased length of stay in hospital, which can cost an extra $2,000 apiece. One in three seniors living in our communities are at nutritional risk, and one in five long-term care re residents are malnourished. In order to correct the problem, we must support the access to registered dietitians in primary care, home care, long-term care homes, hospitals, and in our public health units. We should continue easy access to Eat Right Ontario to support nutritional screening for all Ontarians. We can bring awareness to this issue by being involved in a discussion and retweeting at Dietitians Can or and hashtag food is medicine. March 5th is also marked this year as Dietitians Day. Mr. Speaker, I hope everyone will join me this month in raising awareness around malnutrition. I'd also take the opportunity to thank all the dietitians throughout Canada for all the hard work they do and their continued efforts in fighting and improving access to good food for all. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Hamilton East, Stony Creek. Thank you, Speaker. Two weeks ago, I was honoured to attend the celebration of the 120th anniversary of the International Women's Institute movement, which began in my hometown of Stony Creek. Adelaide Hunter Hoodless, born in St. George, Ontario, was one of the most important advocates for rural women in Canadian history. She co-founded the Women's Institutes, the National Council for Women, the Victorian Order of Nurses, and the YWCA in Canada. Her infant son died in 1889 from contaminated, unpasteurized milk. Blaming herself for not knowing the danger, she dedicated herself to domestic education for rural women to prevent future avoidable tragedies. On February 19, 1987, she organized the first meeting of the Women's Institute in Stony Creek. The Women's Institute was dedicated to promoting the education and personal growth for rural women. The first Women's Institute constitution was drafted a few days later at the home of Janet and Erlen Lee on Ridge Road in Stony Creek. Erlen, Erlen Lee was a great supporter and promoter of the new organization. The home that he and Janet shared is today the Erlen Lee Museum. It is well worth a visit to learn about the international women's movement that was born in our province 120 years ago. Thank you to the Federated Women's Institutes of Ontario for hosting the celebration and on reaching this remarkable anniversary. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Kingston and the Islands. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Earlier this month, I had the opportunity to meet with the manager of Kingston Transit, Jeremy DaCosta, and his team at Kingston Transit to discuss the very exciting developments taking place in my community. Kingston Transit continues to grow and expand at an incredible pace, welcoming more new riders than ever before. In this past year, a grand total of 5.2 million riders boarded Kingston Transit buses, which is an 11.4 percent increase from 2015. This success would not have been possible had it not been for the dedicated and wonderful staff at Kingston Transit as well as the City of Kingston. The team at Kingston Transit brought their efforts together to increase accessibility for all Kingstonians, working with the City and community organizers to expand services and implement innovative initiatives like the Employees Pass program, which offers employers access to discounted monthly adult passes. It also generates a monthly savings for each individual of between $10.50 and $23.25 for those who are participating. Kingston Transit has already secured 22 partnerships with various employers in our community like Queen's University, Kingston General Hospital, Providence Care and StarTech. The program is easy to set up and a great addition to any employer's package. I hope that all members of this legislature will encourage their transit providers to do a similar program as we've done in Kingston and Dallas. Thank you very much. Thank you. Further member statements from member from Ford Hill. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Président. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. The Franco-Ontarian flag was officially raised for the first time on September 25th uh, in Sudbury. The creators of the flag are Gaetan Gervin, history professor at Laurentian University, and Michelle Dupuis, student in political science in her first year at the same university. This flag was officially adopted by the 
Franco-Ontarian Association of Canada in 1978. The flag symbolizes winter and summer in Ontario and has the official flower of Ontario on it. The fleur-de-lis on the left reminds us of the appearance of the Franco-Ontarian people. On June 29, 2001, the Franco-Ontarian flag was made an official symbol of the province by the Legislative Assembly of Ontario. I'm very proud to wear this pin, which has on it the flag. And I will be happy to hear the discussions on the motion, which recognizes the song Our Place Today. And I would like to wish everyone well on this very important day for Franco-Ontarians. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Further member statements, the member from Etobicoke Lakeshore. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I'm pleased to rise uh, this afternoon to congratulate LAMP Community Health Centre in the riding of Etobicoke Lakeshore on their 40th anniversary. Mr. Speaker, it all began in the mid-70s when a group of dedicated uh, people in the community led a grassroots movement to ensure that there was better integrated community-based health care in South Etobicoke. Coming out of that, in 1976, the Lakeshore Area Multi-Services Project Community Health Centre, or LAMP as everybody calls it, was established. And over these past 40 years, not only has LAMP provided exceptional community health-based services to our community, it has also engaged with our young people, uh, with seniors, providing a number of programs and opportunities to use facilities to not just deal with doctors and nurses and health pr practitioners, but to all the things that make for healthy living in our community. Mr. Speaker, I'm, uh, as a local, lifelong local resident, I, like tens of thousands of others, have benefited from their services over the years. LAMP is the heart of our Lakeshore community, and I want to thank the many hundreds of volunteers, staff, and dedicated board members that have always made LAMP the centre of our community and continue to provide exceptional services to South Etobicoke. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Oxford. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I'm pleased to rise to share the results of my annual Oxford Business Survey. I want to thank all the businesses that took the time to respond and share their information with me. Their message was clear. Despite all their hard work, Ontario businesses are struggling because of the government red tape and the cost of doing business. Sadly, it's the same message I delivered to the government last year and the year before. They reported that their hydro bills have doubled or tripled and that the majority of the cost is not the electricity they use, but the global adjustment, regulatory charges, and delivery charges. In some cases, the extra costs created this by this government are over 90 per cent of the hydro bill. In just the last few months, it's also been announced that we are losing 1,000 jobs in Oxford. That makes it even more important that government listen to these businesses. As one business owner said, quote, taxes, 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 they need to stop increasing. I'm at the tipping point. If they go up anymore, I will have to close the doors. Another said they are losing their business customers as companies move to the United States. Mm -hmm. Businesses need a government that will cut red tape and reduce the cost of doing business before it loses even more jobs. They need a government that will actually address the policies and have results in hydro's cost tripling, that have resulted in hydro cost tripling. Our business people and their employees work hard every day, and they deserve a government that will work for them and help them succeed. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank all members for their statements. It's